Hey guys, it's MJ, the student Zach Tree, and in this video, we're going to be looking at short term company finance. Uh, so, this is still with subject CT2, uh, chapter 2, and I have, I've got some slides, uh, but they're just text based, so feel free to use this as an audio only um, video. So, without further ado, let's jump into the material. Um, I want to be talking about five various short term. Um, things that you can use to get finance for your company. They are bank overdraft, trade credit, factoring, bills of exchange, and commercial paper. Now, let's start off with bank overdrafts. I think this is the one most people would be familiar with. Um, the idea here is that normally with a bank, you go in and you put money in, and that earns interest, and whenever you need it, you take that money out. Now, there can be situations uh, specifically with businesses um, starting up and all this type of stuff where they have a lot of negative cash flows in the beginning and only start getting the positive cash flows at the end. And sometimes due to bad budgeting or um, disasters or just ad hoc expenses, companies find that they don't have enough money. And this is where the bank steps in and they say, listen here guys, we know you're going to make money in the future. We're going to provide you with your liquidity. You can overdraw the amount of money in your bank account. However, by doing so, you do get quite a high interest rate is applied. Um, you do have to organize with a bank. And it does very much depend on the relationship as the bank can recall that money at any time. So you are a little bit at their mercy. And that's why it's very important to have a good relationship with your bank manager. Also, they might limit the amount you can overdraft um, and they might limit the time period. Next, um, let's talk about trade credit. Now, trade credit is quite interesting. This is where, let's say, I'm going to buy something from um, another company, you know, as part of my supply chain. Let's say I'm making shoes and I need to buy a whole bunch of leather in order to make my shoes then what I can organize with the, the company that's selling me the leather, I can agree to get the leather now and only pay them in, say, 90 days' time. And this is good for me in the sense that, you know, for those 90 days, whatever money I could have spent on that can build up a little bit of interest. But also this is a way to, you know, to help your cash flows and because you want to push the negative cash flows as far into the future as possible so that they're close or even after the positive cash flows so that you don't have a liquidity problem. Although, as you can imagine, a lot of businesses um, can default on these trade credits. So I get the leather, I make the shoes, nobody buys the shoes, I don't have enough money to pay back my leather supplier, which means the next time I come to buy leather, they're not going to offer me the trade credits again. And Again, we're seeing how important relationships are with business because the better your relationship with them, the longer you can get your trade credit period for, and that's a big benefit for you. Um, and in most cases, no explicit interest is charged. And I mean, it's becoming so common in industry that some businesses offer discounts if you pay in cash instead. Now we're going to go on to something called factoring. Factoring is something, I mean, I remember I was not very familiar with it, although we did cover it a little bit in school accounting. And factoring is when, let's say, people come to my shop and they buy their shoes on credit, which means they buy the shoes today, but they're only going to pay me at the end of the month. Um, this is not good for me in the sense that uh, my positive cash flow is now being pushed into the future, although I'm prepared to do it. Um, in order to sell more shoes and, you know, it's good for, for customer service and customer satisfaction. But now let's say I need that money straight away. What I can do is I can approach a third party and engage in factoring, which means I give up the rights to that credit sale in exchange for cash flow now. And the reason why another company would do it is because I'd offer them a bit of a discount. So if you, it's, it's normally used if you really need the cash flow and um, you, know, you have a little bit of a liquidity problem, you can 
off offloaded to a third party. Now there's various types of factoring, there's non-recourse factoring and there's recourse factoring. Um, recourse factoring only provides early payments of invoices and non-recourse factoring is where the supplier sells on its trade debt to a factor in order to obtain cash payments of the accounts before their actual due dates. So what this means is that factor then takes over all the responsibility for credit analysis of new accounts, uh, payment collections and credit loss. But like I said, factoring, I guess if you, you're in the business and you're trading, you're a trader and all that sort of stuff, you'll be more familiar with factoring than I am. Um, let's talk about bills of exchange. Okay, bills of exchange, these are, these are interesting things. I mean, the definition of a bills of exchange, um, it is effectively a claim to the amount owned by a purchaser of goods on credit, and it may be accepted by a bank. This means that the bank guarantees payment against the bill to whomever holds the bill at maturity. The bill can then be, be sold to raise short-term finances. Now, when you think of um, so these bills of exchange, they kind of have they've got two names on them. They've got the company and they've got this investment uh, bank who kind of guarantees it. So yeah, bills of exchange are known as two-name paper because they carry the name of the company which owes the money and of the accepting bank. And when that endorser is say, an eligible bank, the bill is known as an eligible bill of exchange and that means it can be sold to the Bank of England. Although here in South Africa, I wonder how the rules and regulations work with regards to that. Uh, like Again, it's not something that I've come across often are bills of exchanges. There's also... Um, so that's got two, two names on it. There's another one that just has one name on it, and that is uh, commercial paper. And commercial paper is a single name form of short-term borrowing used by large companies. It comes in the form of a bearer document for large denominations, which are issued at a discount and redeemed at par. And the nice thing about a bearer document is whoever holds that piece of paper can then exchange it um, for money. So in a way, it's almost it's almost like the business or uh, these large businesses are printing money in the sense that they're printing paper that have a value on that can be traded and it can be collected or exchanged for you know real currency um, at a certain date. But and companies, yeah, their companies can do this in order to to raise a whole bunch of short term finance. I mean, these are I mean, the time periods for them are quite short. Um, I mean, they can range anything from one week to, to one year. And they're normally quite big denominations, you know, like 5 million rand a pop or, or something like that. So that is commercial paper. Again, it's not something um, small business owners would be dealing with. It's more of a short-term finance for a large corporation. So remember that in the exam, if it's always look at what company you're dealing with, if they're saying, how can this company raise finance? If they are a small or medium term uh, company, then commercial paper is not likely to be uh, a viable option. But still mention it and you'll get marked for saying that commercial paper is not viable for them. But anyway, that's all we have time for on um, short term finances. Thanks so much for listening and I'm going to be making a video on tax. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Tax is quite a, quite a boring topic so I will try and spice it up a bit. And I'm also going to be launching a video on artificial intelligence. So make sure you check that one out. It's going to be, it's going to be quite a fun video that one. But yeah, thanks guys for listening and I'll see you next time. Cheers.